Have you ever wondered if you could make animations on your mobile phone or on your tablet? Well, there's an app out there for you. It's called Flipper Clip. Some of you may have known it for this video since you're not new to the app. But for those of you who are and are seeking to improve your skills, you may find this video very helpful. And with that said, let's get into it. The purpose of this video is to introduce you to the workspace toolbar and we are going to be talking particularly on the pen and the color wheel. If you are using a tablet, the toolbar is displayed at the middle left of your screen and it contains five icons. The first icon is the pen and by clicking on it, you will be presented with this. By clicking on the pen image again, you are presented with three other brushes you can choose from. I like to call these brushes the pen, the pencil, the brush and the marker respectively. I rarely ever use any other brush aside the pen in the course of my animation and in future tutorial videos, I may explain how I use other brushes. For now, let's just focus on the pen. After selecting your pen, dragging the circle directly below it up is used to increase its pixel size while dragging the circle below it down is used to reduce the pixel size. This will help to determine the thickness or thinness of your pen. The smallest thinness you can achieve is 1 pixel and the largest you can have is 300 pixels. By clicking on the box below, you will be presented with the color wheel. But before we proceed to the color wheel, I would like to talk about stylus pressure. For those of you who have devices that come with a compatible stylus, you can enable your stylus pressure on your flipper clip settings. Doing so will enable you to vary the thickness and thinness of your stroke with your pen depending on the pressure you apply with your stylus on your screen. To enable or disable this feature, all you have to do is move to your flipper clip settings and click on stylus pressure. Let's take a look at what happens when we switch it off. Notice how the line is uniform and there is no variety in its thickness. Personally, I prefer to have this option active because I want my lines to have a little bit of inconsistency to them. When I make my animation outlines, the pixel size I usually go for is 4 pixels. This is because the stylus pressure feature only becomes active at 4 pixels and going below that shows no difference in the thickness or thinness of your lines. At 1, 2 and 3 pixels, the line thickness appears uniform regardless of the pressure you apply to your screen with your stylus. The stylus pressure feature has different effects on different brushes. While it affects the thickness of the pen, it affects the transparency or should I say the opacity of the pencil. Areas where less pressure is applied is less opaque, while areas where more pressure is applied is more visible. The stylus pressure seems to have no effect on the marker and there is also no noticeable change in the stylus pressure when using the brush as well. As I said earlier, clicking on this box below takes you to the color wheel but there is more to it than that. By sliding down over this box, you can increase the transparency of your brushes and by sliding up, you can reduce it. The lower the percentage, the lesser the visibility of your lines and the higher the percentage, the more the visibility of your lines. The opacity of your lines can also be adjusted in the color wheel section by dragging this to the left and to the right. The more you drag it to the left, the less visible your lines are and the more you drag it to the right, the more visible it becomes. 
As you might have already guessed, the color wheel is used to determine the color of your pen. Dragging this line across the circle of the color wheel helps you to choose your base color. And moving the circle within the square of the color wheel helps you to determine the shade of the selected color. At the very top, we have rules of colors, some of which are preset colors on the app. Clicking on one of these rules affects the colors at the bottom row and you can now select colors from this bottom row and use them to determine the color of your lines. You can also customize your own row of colors. By clicking on the icon at the upper right of the color wheel section, you can create a new preset. You can then start adding colors of your choice by using the plus icon on the bottom row. Select your color of choice on the color wheel and press the plus icon below to add it to your row. By clicking on this icon, you can select any color that appears on your canvas and use it as the color of your brush. You can also add such a color to your preset. You can rename your row of preset colors. By holding on to the name, you are presented with some options. Click on rename to change the name. By clicking on clone, you can create an exact row of colors that you just made. And by clicking on remove, you can delete a preset color that you've just made. You can also change a particular color in the rows of colors you have in your preset. To do this, all you need to do is to select a color from your color wheel and then hold onto the box of the color that you want to change. That's about everything when it comes to the color wheel. But there is one more feature that seems very insignificant but can come in very handy when you are making your animations, particularly when you failed to establish a preset color. And it all lies with this box. Let's assume that you are currently making an animation and you've selected the color red for your outlines. In the process, you decide to change the color to black. And after you've selected the color on your color wheel, you suddenly realize that you still have a need for that color red. Instead of trying to figure out the exact color on your color wheel by trying to guess how closely the color red is to the ones that you've chosen, you can simply click on this box. Clicking on the left half of this box will take you to your previous color. If there's anything you don't understand about this video, please leave a comment. And if you found this video particularly helpful, please leave a like, share and subscribe. Thank you.